Challenger. Challenges. Challengers. 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 Zendaya. Tashi's Rashid. Tashi's. Josh O'Connor. Patrick. 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 Mike Feisman. Art. 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 Yeah, but you're not a tennis player. So you don't know what tennis is. I'm here today to talk about Challengers and I think you know exactly why this movie has so many different points to touch on and it encompasses a lot of things that I love. Threesomes, tennis, hot people. Did you know I loved all those things? I don't know. This movie takes one of the most infuriating tropes of all time, a love triangle, and makes it not only even more frustrating, but gives us something that we have all been waiting for, a love triangle that is not two to one. We've got a little bit of a mix going on, and we have some people that don't even love other people within the love triangle. We've got someone that just loves the sport. So sit back, grab a snack. Today we're going to be talking about all things Challengers and why I loved this movie so much, but also just talking about some of the crazy things that happened in this movie because some of these things just need to be discussed about right now. For a quick summary, Challengers is a love triangle drama that centers around one sport being tennis. It is passionate, it is sexy, it is thrilling. It includes three gorgeously scrumptious hot people in it that make you want to drool at the sight of them. And it follows Tashi and the two little boys that are trailing behind her and her journey in basically losing her career to a freak accident and becoming a coach later on in her career. If you clicked on this video and you haven't seen the movie, I suggest you go watch it because this is a theater experience that everyone is going to be talking about 10 years later from now. The same way that people talk about the social network and how that theater experience was something so special and so thrilling, Challengers is gonna be spoken about in the exact same way. And please go see it in a Dolby theater. Please go see it in an IMAX. Please go see it in anything because, oh my God, is it worth it? This was the one time where I'm gonna tell you seeing it in a Dolby theater in an IMAX theater is completely worth it. This movie is astounding to watch. It is brilliant. It is eye-catching. There's tons of movies where people tell you to go see it in IMAX and I'm like, why am I here? Why did I spend the absurd amount of money it takes to go to the movie theaters nowadays to watch this slow, heavy on dialogue movie? Why did you tell me to go see it in theaters? This movie is something you have to see in theaters. It's got such great camera work. It is so creative. It is so lively. It is so upbeat. It is magnificent to watch. It is so fun to see. You're going to want to see it multiple times. So please, if you have not seen the movie, go watch it right now and come back to this video. If I could do anything from this video and influence anyone to go see it in theaters, please go see this movie in theaters because it is one of the things where it's one of those movies where 10 years is going to pass and anyone who didn't see it in theaters is going to regret it. Now we're on to the second part of the video, which is plot and characters. So we're gonna be going through the plot timeline. We're gonna be going through the characters. There's three main characters that we follow throughout the film. And I'm gonna be going into all the details that I find necessary to talk about. There is so much juice and drama within this film and the characters, they have so many layers to them that just keep getting better and better. I've only seen the film once, but I feel like with every single watch, it's just gonna keep getting better. And I'm gonna be noticing more things about these characters. Even from Zendaya herself, she tells you to go watch the movie two or three times because the audience viewers of who the villain is changes throughout different watches. So I'm excited to see how that translates for different audience members. We go through three timelines through this story. This movie goes and splices through three different timelines. You have college days, which is their younger years, right when they graduate, and Tashi and Art go to Stanford. You have the present day, which is Art and Patrick having a tennis match. And then you have this filler era where it kind of goes from like eight years to five years ago, kind of during their, their older in between transition years between this these two prevalent time periods. So let's talk about present day because present day is where we start the movie at. This is all about Patrick and Art's big match. This has a lot riding on it that we don't find out till later within the film and it is a an astounding watch. Oh my God, for someone who doesn't know anything about tennis, I was at the edge of my seat. I was at the edge of my seat and I knew everything that was going on even though I know nothing about tennis. I 
love this scene. I love this part of the movie. I think it is so powerful. I think it is so lively. I think it is so such it packs a freaking punch in your face. And this scene has two big factors riding on it within this scene that we know of when we are introduced to it. One, Patrick is basically a broke boy. I was gonna say bum. I was gonna say bum. He's a broke boy who needs to win the prize money because he couldn't even afford his hotel while checking in for the match that he's about to play at. You get money for qualifying, you get money for winning. This is what we know Patrick to be at right now. We know him to need money. And from what we know of art, we can tell that he is playing for his wife. Yeah! She has been playing vicariously through him and she can tell that he is over with his career. And in turn, what we're seeing is that Art wants to win so his wife won't leave him, which is very sad. What we find out later through the film is that Art and Tashi had a conversation the night before the match and Art goes, what's gonna happen if I lose tomorrow? I need you to tell me that it's gonna be okay if I don't win tomorrow. And she's like, I'm not gonna say that because it's like literally not okay if you don't win tomorrow. And he's like, okay. He's like, what's gonna happen if I lose tomorrow? And she's like, I'm gonna leave you. And you're like, Tashi, like, why would you say that? Like, there are so many things where it's like, I knew what Tashi was gonna say and I still was like, why would you say that? So rewinding a little bit because I don't wanna give too many of my thoughts away about the ending of the movie because it is pretty substantial. Let's go back to when these three characters met. They met right at the end of high school at a junior's playoff of some sort. I'm not really sure. I'm not familiar with what the terms are, but it said junior somewhere. So I'm assuming it's some sort of junior's playoff. Art and Patrick were in a doubles team and then they have to go again against each other the next day. Before that, the night before they have to compete against each other, they meet Tashi. They are like, I wanna meet Tashi because they watch her play and they're like, I wanna meet Tashi. They're so in love with her. She's so beautiful. She's so talented. I'm so obsessed. And they go to her party and meet her and they have like a little like conversation where like they like obviously both want her. They obviously both want her bad and it's like, pathetic it's honestly like these two men acting like dogs like little lap dogs and it's like kind of everything like as much as i say it's pathetic like as men should be like i don't think that men deserve the right to be cocky or prideful or confident i think they should be crawling on the floor for women i don't think that they deserve and any retrospect of life to be cocky in, in relation towards women, in relation towards anything, but specifically towards women. And there's no better representation on screen than seeing two men fawn after Zendaya. Like, that's so true, queen. Like, Luca, you're so right for that. You're actually so right for that. Like, you're weird sometimes, but you're so right. And through this scene, we see them later meet up with Tashi. They invite her to their hotel room for like, just to, like continue talking. Surprisingly, Tashi shows up to their hotel room and they're like literally, they're, they're, they're all over the place. And she comes in. And then they start getting into like conversations about the relationship. Like she knows she they both want her and she is walking them like dogs. She's walking them like dogs and she starts getting some juicy information out from them. She starts asking them about not only them and their girlfriends and their player nature, but also what they've done together. Because it's like obvious that they have. Like, I'm like, we're not stupid. And they go on to reveal to her the things that they've done together, basically in short. Patrick had taught Art how to satisfy himself when they were younger because they were roommates. <gasps> they were roommates. And this is what they tell her, but I don't know if anyone else thought this. I think they did so much more than that. I think that there was like a whole line of history between Art and Patrick that we don't know about. Raise, raise your hand if you think they did a lot more. Because I did. I definitely thought they did more. And is that so wrong to think? And I have a lot more to say about that too in, in referral to Patrick's character down the line and what's at stake for him really and what he's really lost throughout the movie. But in terms of their relationship when they were younger, I totally believe that they did so much more than just 
teach each other how to satisfy themselves. They're way too comfortable to just, they had some funky scene. They had a really funky scene and no one's talking about it. Literally no one is talking about this scene. There's a scene where they're like walking up the bleachers and they're like, one of them like farts. And like, no one's talking about it. Like literally no one's talking about it. Like he burps right after and someone like when they're walking up the bleachers, they literally fart. Out of Patrick and Art, one of them farts and no one's talking about it. No one's talking about it. And I'm like, I, if it was just me, if it was just me, I would have been like, okay, I must have like heard a phantom fart. Maybe someone in the theater farted and I'm just like blaming it on Art and Patrick. But my friend that I saw the movie with was literally like, no, they literally farted. Like, is that what I thought? Like we literally looked at each other and was like, was that a fart? Like, and no one's talking about it. And I know this is like so stupid and I like should not be including it, but like, let me know, comment down below if you heard the fart within Challengers, because I, I feel like I was like not the only one that heard that, but no one is talking about it. And it's driving me insane because I feel like I'm just hearing phantom farts at this point, but I need you fart fans stand up. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it was art because his name sounds like art. Anyways, fart tangent aside, let's move on to the pivotal moment of the scene that we've all been waiting for me to talk about. I don't know if anyone cared about me talking about this, but we're gonna be talking about it anyways. The ultimate sexy scene of the movie. This scene takes place between obviously the three main characters, Tashi, Art, and Patrick. And Tashi comes to the bed after she hears that they've like done things, they've diddled and fiddled each other. Awesome. And she's like, come here. And they like, <laughs> That was weird. Um, <laughs> this scene is so great. I loved it. This scene, and everyone's been saying this, but I'm gonna say it too. Challengers is bringing back sexy scenes without actually depicting sex. It is the ultimate vibe. I think that it is so great. And no one's gonna depict sexy scenes without actually having sex like Luca Guadagnino. Luca Guadagnino is impeccable at showcasing sensuality sexuality without being this really graphic way. Cause I remember, call me by your name. I read the book, that book was like, that book had some graphic scenes and Luca Guadagnino depicted it in a very, very classy way. And I still, I'm, you know, I know people have thoughts about Comment by Your Name. My opinion has changed vastly over the years about Comment by Your Name. I won't get into it in this video, but in terms of directing sex scenes, Luca Guadagnino is it because in Challengers, it is the most sexy thing ever. It is passionate, it is thrilling, it is, it is raw and there's no sex in this movie. There's no sex in this movie that none of the characters have sex that we see on camera. Can I get a round of applause for that? Yeah! Can I get a round of applause for that? But I'm all for sex in every light. I think that like shying away from sex in movies is shying away from like the truth of life. I don't know. I don't agree with the notion that sex should be censored from movies. I think that like sex is a part of life. And a lot of the times I think that uh, people think sex and nudity should have a reason for being in movies. When in reality, I think it doesn't need a reason because it's like, it's almost like saying that like depicting someone eating should be necessary to the plot to include it because like it's a part of like our lives and like it creates life and I, it's one of the like handful of basic human things that we all experience. So to say that you need to have a reason to include it is kind of bizarre. Anyways, that's a topic for another video. This scene is magnificent. It goes from Tashi kissing Art to Tashi kissing Patrick to arms touching, hands touching. And then you see this cheeky motherfucker Tashi starts leaning back. She starts leaning back and pushing their faces together. She's kind of like, she wanted them like to do stuff bad. And she like pushes her face together and at first they're like, no. It's like, I know you guys have kissed already. Like stop lying. Like you guys have obviously kissed. They finally start making out. And it is this like wet monstrosity of a kiss. And it is scrumptious like, i'm going to be honest like in terms of kisses and like open mouth kisses within media i'm usually one to be like that's fucking disgusting and you shouldn't show that on screen it should actually be illegal to show that because it's actually really gross i was actually i had to take a pause i had to take a pause and i had to i had to check myself because i was my heart my heart was fluttering because they're all the kisses there were like 
three-way kissing. It was like, it was a lot. And then she abruptly stands up and says, bye. Bye. She says, bye. And she says, whoever wins the match tomorrow can have my number. And then Patrick slaps Art's boner and it's, I literally like clutched my pearls, my non-existent pearls, I clutched them. When Patrick smacked Art's boner. Like, what are we talking about? What are we watching? What am I watching? Like it was, it was really funny. And no one wants to talk about how funny this movie is. This movie is actually super funny. Like I watched it in a full theater and like kind of like, we were kind of gagged. Like, I feel like we were kind of gagged with how like much they ate with the comedy of this movie because there's such subtle things that happen, such subtle lines that happen that are just like actually really funny. And I feel like when we start clipping the movie, like after it comes out on digital, like we're gonna realize how funny it is. It's a very comedic movie. At a lot of different points, it's very funny, especially between Patrick and Ark. I feel like they have such good chemistry comedically and such good chemistry in all aspects, sensually, friendship wise, even romantic wise. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to that and you'll see why in a second. So what happens at the match between Patrick and Art is Patrick wins and they talk about it the next day because he gives Tashi his number or Tashi gives him his number and they go out and they have this conversation between Art and Patrick where they're practicing and Art's like, please like tell me if you guys hooked up. Like you have to tell me. Patrick's like, I'm not gonna tell. I don't kiss and tell, da 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 da. And then Art's like, just give me a sign. Serve like me if you did something. Patrick's like, you know you do this thing when you serve. Art's like, what? He's like, you put the ball right in the center below the racket. You put it right in the center before you serve. He's like, oh, I didn't notice I did that. And then Patrick does that. And Art's like, my man's. My man's, my man's, my man's. Freaks. Basically what happens after that is Tashi and Art end up going to Stanford and Tashi and Patrick end up dating for a while. Talking a little bit about their college time, Tashi and Art are obviously playing at Stanford together. Um, they see each other regularly. Art invites Tashi to go to lunch with him and they're talking. Art's like, I didn't like peg you guy, you and Patrick to still be together. And she's like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? She's like, are you insinuating that he's hooking up with other girls on tour? Patrick is on tour playing tennis because he decided he didn't want to go to college. He wanted to go directly into being pro because that's what he told Tashi over and over again. You should just go directly into going pro. You shouldn't waste your time at Stanford. And when he said that, Tashi said, I don't want my only skill in life to be playing tennis. Which is like ironic that she says that. Unfortunately, my only skill in life is hitting a ball with a racket. And during this lunch, Art decides to drop a bomb towards Tashi. He can tell that she's getting a little upset. He can tell he's riling up her feathers. And he decides to say to her, he's not in love with you. Okay. And Tashi goes, what makes you think I want someone to be in love with me? Okay. Okay, queen, like she kinda ate with that. Like she kinda ate with that, but I know it like definitely got under her skin. <laughs> like I know she ate, but like I can tell you were kinda hurt by that. Like I can tell it kinda hurt you. It's okay, it's okay to admit it, queen. Like, you know, it kinda, it kinda hurt me too. Like when I heard it, I was like, oh, like that's, you know, that's jarring. And right after this, Patrick decides to visit Tashi. He decides to visit Tashi. He's like, oh my God, bae, I'm here. But he obviously visits like his main boo, which is Art first. And they have this like really cutie scene. I don't know, like I need a whole movie about like their time when they were like at like boarding school, I guess, together or at tennis camp together because they have like a lot of lore. They have a lot of lore that runs very deep and I feel like we're not talking about that enough. We're not talking about that nearly enough as like we should be because he visits Art first. He's like, I want to see my my mans, my mans, my mans, my mans first. And Patrick goes and visits Art and Art starts stirring the pot with Patrick too. And he's like, you know, she just doesn't like you like that. Like, you heard it from me first. Like, I think, like, you know, she doesn't want 
want you. And Patrick sees right through it. He's like, you motherfucker. You motherfucker, you're trying to screw with me. You're trying to screw with my head. And you know what? I applaud you because I would do the exact same thing. And while this whole conversation is happening, they're eating churros. This is the iconic churro scene. And they're having a lot of different innuendos with churros. I'm sorry. No one wants to say it. They're having a lot of weird sexual innuendos with the churros. They're eating each other's churros. He takes the churro, takes a bite out of it, and puts it in his mouth and he takes a bite out of it. I can't help but think that's a sexual innuendo. That churro is in a symbolism for a penis. The churro is a symbol for a penis. I don't think it gets any clearer than that. I'm sorry. And this all happens. And then Patrick and Tashi finally have a scene. He finally goes sees his side boo, Tashi. Um, he had to see main boo first. He goes to see his side boo, Tashi. And they're having a little moment. They're having a little sexy time moment. And for a weird reason, they're like talking about tennis the whole time that they're about to like do something sexual. Patrick's like, can we not talk about tennis? And then Tashi's like, what? Like that's the like boner killer of the century for Tashi. Like if you're not talking about tennis, you're not talking to me. Like she does not want to talk about anything if it is not related to tennis. Like it turns her on, it gets her going, keeps her sane. If it's not talking about tennis, I'm not. And it literally like boner killer for her. She's like, boom, I'm done. I'm, I gotta get ready for my match. Like I gotta get ready for my match. Like I can't do this right now. And they have a big fight where she's just kind of like dismisses him because he doesn't want to talk about tennis. And he gets really upset and he's like, I'm not going to be one of your little boys like in your fan club. And like, if you want someone to be a little lap dog for you, then you can go, you can go be with Art because that's what he's going to do for you. He's going to do anything that you want him to do. Okay, queen. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like, like she kind of got, I feel like Patrick kind of gagged her a little bit. I mean, her response to that of being like, you're not a part of my fan club. Also ate down, like also was amazing. But he kind of, he kind of caught her off guard for a little bit where he was like, go be with art. If you want someone to be a lap dog, go be with art. And cause you know, she, she kind of likes art too. Like, you know, she was, she was, she paused. She paused for a second. I got go and they have this whole fight. She's like, get out, I need to be alone. She goes off to her match. He decides he's not showing up. He's like, oh, we had a big fight. I'm not coming to the match. This match is where she injures herself and has a career ending knee injury. It looked disgusting. Luca Guadagnino, I hate you because I can never unimagine that. Every single time before when she like slid, it just like, it literally made my like, ugh, my skin crawl. Like when I saw her doing those slides earlier on in the movie where she was sliding with her front foot and her back, Ugh, her back foot was like gliding on Ugh, it literally like made me want to die because I was like I was like bitch stop just stop like I can already tell that something bad's gonna happen stop and after she has this career ending injury she doesn't know what's career ending yet she goes to the infirmary and Art's with her of course of course he like runs down from the stands and he's like bae like I'm here, like Tashi, I'm here. He like hops over like the thing. And he's like, Tashi, I'm here, bae. Okay. And then like once Patrick finds out, he like comes to the infirmary and Tashi's like, get the fuck out. She's like, get the fuck out right now. And like, as Patrick's like, no, like, please, like, let me like talk. Da, 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 da. All of a sudden we hear chirp, 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 chirp from art. Goes, get the fuck out, Patrick! Get the fuck out! And I said, oh. Wish he would yell at me like that. Anyways, he says that and Patrick actually abides, which is really weird. And this is kind of like the beginning sort of of Tashi and Art. They train a little bit together and you know Tashi tries to recover from her injury and just inevitably fails and she cannot recover from this knee injury by the way guys knee injuries are very very serious please take care of your knees make sure you're doing some squats make sure you're like you're bending all the way down and bending all the way back up because your knees are very important and once you lose them once you lose that mobility within your knees you do not get the back please take care of your knees they're very important now time for the next time jump we're jumping to their mid-20s this is kind of like the middle period of the movie basically what happens during this time period is that like Tashi and Art finish school Art goes on to playing professionally 
and Tashi ends up becoming a coach for women's tennis. They end up reuniting at, uh, you know, another tennis thing that I don't know what it is. They go to Applebee's. They go to an Applebee's and they eat. And I literally thought it was a Chili's because I thought I saw the molten lava cake and I was like, that's giving Chili's. By the way, this movie had, this movie was giving Korean drama with like the amount of sponsors they had for it. I swear every single brand logo like was kicking it. Like they, it was Applebee's, it was Gatorade, it was Nike, it was Adidas, it was, it was fucking, uh, Uniqlo. It was fucking like every single brand was in it. Like they knew that they had to hop on this Apple, like every single goddamn brand was in this. And I was honestly quite loving it because it seemed to be very, you know, seamless, except for the Applebee's one. I don't know why Applebee's was such a big, like pivotal moment. Like, I don't know why they were hooking up an Applebee's because basically what happens is that our asks, Tashi to be his coach, to be his assistant coach, because she like obviously gives unwanted criticism. And like, of course, like she wants to play tennis. So she's like, eh, if you're gonna play, you better play it right. But I will say that a lot of the times when she has given criticism, they didn't ask her. Also like Tashi, you can give me un unwarranted criticism all you want. Like I don't even play tennis, but I would, do anything you said. All that happens is they end up like having a very steamy moment outside of an Applebee's. And that just is kind of like the basis of their relationship is that they started hooking up outside of an Applebee's and you can't base a relationship off of that. Like nothing good will come out of that. Like there's always gonna be a power imbalance. Like there's always gonna be a power imbalance if you're like hooking up outside of an Applebee's. And I don't know how to like elaborate on that, but it just remains true. Like, I don't know how to explain why that's right, but it is. And one final thing that happens in between the past timeline and the present timeline within this mid 20s era is that during a match, a professional match that Art has, Patrick ends up seeing Tashi and they end up hooking up. Um. So and this is already at a point where Tashi and Art are either engaged or married. So yeah, she cheats on him. Do you know, can you not do that on camera? So before we get into the ending scenes, I wanna talk about the characters because I feel like the characters are really interesting and I'm sure a lot of people have come to similar conclusions that I have. I don't think I'm very unique in these, but I would love to talk about them with you guys. I think each character represents something so unique but also falls back on a similar fallback of codependency through this whole entire press tour zendaya has been referring to this as codependency the film and i totally agree with that i think they all have such unique wants and losses throughout the film but i think the thing that they fall back on most is their codependency nature that they have within everything that they do. Starting off with Patrick, I find Patrick to be a very interesting character and I find it to be very interesting, the opinions on Patrick, because I feel like it can go either way. A lot of people can think he's the villain. A lot of people can think that he is also a victim or um, just a guy. Um, just a guy throughout the movie. I personally fall in the line of like, I don't think he's like all good or all bad. I think that when I first like left the movie, I was like, he is an evil bisexual man. Like there is no denying that man is evil. And then like after sitting on it and kind of like letting it marinate, I was like, wait, like, I think there's something like more to this character. And obviously I'm gonna try to talk about these characters without talking about the ending scene. So like bear with me because I have a lot of thoughts about the ending scene and how where their characters end up. So these are all my thoughts on the characters kind of throughout the film, but my thoughts on the ending scene are gonna be like where my thoughts are on the characters and where they end up at the end of the story. Patrick goes from basically having it all to having nothing. He's the one that wins Tashi's number in the beginning. He beats Beats art in the game that they have together and he goes on tour immediately whereas Tashi and Art go to school and are playing lower level lower risk games. His story is the only one that by the end of the movie he kind of has this loss of nothing. Um, I feel like for a lot of them there's like really high stakes. I think the biggest loss is his pride because at the end of the day they talk about him not having money at the beginning of the film and then later on we realize that he has 
um, a very wealthy family to come back to at any time he wants. He just doesn't want to follow the path of them. He wants to continue playing on tennis. And the loss for him would be ultimately giving up tennis that he's put so many hours into. I think that he represents a character of trying to find something throughout the film that's giving him worth, whereas the other two are trying to s grasp onto things that give them worth. Like he is the one searching for that worth in something, whereas they are trying to hold on to the worth that they already have. Whether that's Tashi, whether that's tennis or whether that's even art, I think Patrick is a very unique story where he truly does love both of these characters. And I think out of the three, he's the one that loves all three of the things at stake. So Tashi represents obviously loving tennis and tennis is her main love of life. Art represents his love for Tashi and Patrick really shows a love and devotion to all three of those things, which I find to be very interesting. A lot of people might disagree with my thoughts on Patrick and his love for art and how I, I truly believe that he represents a what could have been story. I think all of his losses and desires throughout the film surround a what could have been narrative of what could have been if I went to college instead of going on tour, what could have happened with my tennis career, what could have happened between me and Tashi if Tashi didn't get injured, if we didn't have that big fight, and what could have been with art if I could have had a full relationship with him. What could have been if I was able to be open with my sexuality and fully devote my feelings towards art? I think he embodies what could have been and I find that very interesting. Whereas the other ones are what is now and what is the future. His is what could have been if I didn't make those choices in the past. I find that to be very interesting. Art follows a very interesting path being is that I believe to him to be one of the only out of the three that actually outgrows a lot of his uh, former younger self behaviors. And when I explain that, one of the most negative things we see that Art does is try to meddle within Tashi and Patrick's relationship. And a lot of the bad things that we see with Patrick and Tashi that they do when they're younger still hold true to the, the day that they live in. Tashi in this ultimate need to make everything about tennis and how that will always be higher than any person. That is always going to remain higher than any, any, anybody, anything. And Patrick has a lot of this sneakily going behind people's backs and seeing Tashi and messing with Tashi's head, be like, why are you doing this? Why are you here? He messes with Patrick. He messes with Art's head, like in the sauna. Like it's very much childish and it's very similar to his old ways. And he's one of the only characters that gets called out for being exactly like he was when he was younger. And I think that Tashi is also very similar into how she doesn't really outgrow any of the behaviors she has when she was younger. She only amplifies them because of this painful and uh, devastating loss that she has uh, when she was younger. And I feel like art shows an interesting path because he is the only one out of the three that actually accomplished everything that he wanted to. He's the only one that actually accomplished his goals in tennis and actually accomplished, you know, being with the love of his life, being with Tashi. And I think that he represents a very com content part of us when uh, living life. I think that his character is the only one that could have been content if he wasn't so in love with Tashi. I think his love for Tashi holds him back from being content because he knows what she wants from him and what she wants uh, from her life, which is to live vicariously through him within tennis and ultimately be the very best and he is ready to retire. And I think that that is a very cool representation within the film. Art can be seen as many things and even as the villain, a lot of people think that he can be the villain of the story because of his actions earlier on in the film between Patrick and Tashi. In interviews, Zendaya tells how we need to watch the movie again to realize how Art might not be the innocent, like, you know, baby boy of the film that we know him to be. Art's arc follows kind of almost like a bottom to the top narrative, very much the, uh, inverse of Patrick's, whereas like Patrick kind of goes from having it all to having nothing. 
art has nothing to having it all in a very like surface level um, interpretation of that uh, phrase. But I truly don't think that he is the villain. I don't know. After watching it and kind of seeing where Zendaya truly thinks that he is the villain of the film, which is when he meddles in the relationship, he kind of ignites the fight and kind of leads them, leads them to having the fight. And then that's why Tashi ha gets injured because she's thrown off her game, which sure, sure. That's why they got into the fight. Sure. Like, sure. Like if you want to say that that's why they got into the fight, then you can say it because from what I saw, The reason why they got into the fight was because someone had a little too much pride and dismissed a conversation that wasn't going her way. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm being crazy. Maybe I'm being crazy. But I don't think that the fight necessarily happened all because of art. I think that a lot of those were underlying insecurities. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you're team Art or team Patrick. I would love to know. And I definitely would love to know your thoughts on if you think that Art is the true villain of the story, because that has been like circulating my timeline of like whether or not people agree with Zendaya, because she was so adamant throughout the press tour that like he was the ultimate villain. And then after watching it and after looking back on why she says this, because she says specifically because he meddles in the relationship and how he's the reason for the injury in the first place. I just can't agree with that. Like I literally just like cannot agree with that. Like I don't believe that to be true at all. Tashi is a whirlwind of a character trapped in a mind mindset of a girl whose career was stolen from her from a freak accident in a college tennis match. With her whole career right in front of her, she loses it all and goes on to coaching instead. Once she reunites with Art, she finds potential with him and decides that she will start coaching him. And after his career has run its course, she thinks that this is time to jump ship and leave that man because he's not performing the way she wants him to perform. And she can obviously tell that he wants to retire, but as she's playing vicariously through him, she decides that she might want to jump ship and maybe coach someone else that is asking her to coach him, which is Patrick. She makes remarks throughout the film on the lengths that she would go to be able to play tennis again. And this is where we truly see Tashi's character and what she represents throughout the film. She is obviously, her love is not Patrick or art that those boys don't matter she might have a kid with art but like those boys don't matter. if it meant killing both of those men to play tennis again she would and i saw a tweet that said this i don't know the exact tweet so just know that i'm coming i'm saying this from the tweet i did not think of this and they said that this is why they both love her so much that she would be willing to throw them in a freaking cage with a tiger if it meant playing tennis again. And that is what makes them so in love with her. Her dedication to the sport is what makes them light up. But where the two differ is Art loves being with Tashi he loves the fire. He loves the future that he can build with her. Whereas Patrick, when he talks about his attraction and like towards Tashi, Tashi and Patrick hook up the night before Patrick and Art's tennis match. Patrick says something that really stuck out to me, which was, you used to be so beautiful when you played. That really got me because it confirmed one thing that I had in my mind, Patrick loved the Tashi that played tennis. Art loved the Tashi that she is now. And I think that's where they differ completely. One holding on to the pedestal on who she used to be and one holding on to the pedestal of who she is now. I think that's where they differ in their attraction and like and love of Tashi. The movie throws us into a true three-way relationship and the effects that it has on all parties involved. All characters represent different wants throughout the film. Tashi's love obviously being tennis, Art's love obviously being Tashi, and Patrick's love being all three of those things, Tashi, Art, and tennis. Talking about the most pivotal scene of the movie, Match Point, this scene is 
Oh my God, it's so good. This scene ends with them at a tie in a match point. They're, they're trying to get match point. What we find out about this match is that the night before the match, Patrick and Tashi met up and obviously hooked up. But before that, she had asked Patrick to throw the match with Art because she had just told Art that she would leave him if he lost the match with Patrick. And I think she felt a little bad about that. So she knew that she wanted him to win, not only for the sake of probably not wanting to like leave him, but also like probably for her pride. Because if we know anything about Tashi, she's not staying with a fucking loser. Like that's just embarrassing. Like she wants to stay with him, but like only if he's a winner. Right, right as you should. So cut back to the match. We're down to match point. It's a tie. We don't know who's going to win. Patrick is serving and he keeps throwing his serves. He keeps missing his serves. What the heck? I thought he was literally cooking him in the first like match of the game. And now he's, he can't serve to save his life. And we're like, what's going on? He does it like three times and I'm very confused. And then he, every single time he goes to serve, I'm like, Keep zoning in on his hands. Why are they zoning in on his hands for this serve? I feel like you would want like a wider shot, right? Like you would want a wider shot of this like match point. It's like the most like climactic part of the movie. Keep zoning in on his hands. And I'm like, why? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. Oh my God, guys. He's about to tell, he's about to tell Art that he just fucked his wife the night before. He's going to use the same tell that he used all those years ago when Art asked him if him and Tashi hooked up. He is going to serve just like Art and put the ball right in the center right above the handle of the racket. Guys, I was, I was, I was clutching my pearls. I was, <gasps> the gasp that were heard, the, <gasps> It was something like I realized it and I had to like keep my mouth fucking shut because I knew that that was about to be a fucking, I guessed it before it happened. And then when it happened, it was like the world stopped for a moment. I was gagged. I was gagged. And in the moment, in the moment, I was like, I hate Patrick. Why would he do that? He did that to throw off Art's game. He did that to throw off Art. And then a little bit more thinking came to my brain, a little bit more, more common sense used. No, he was doing that to tell Art, basically, your wife is not shit. You need to play this game for yourself. If you're not gonna win, don't win for her. Win for yourself. I'm gonna play you, you better play back. And that's how I know Patrick was still in love with Art. That's how I fucking know, because who would do that for just a friend? Just a friend? Oh my gosh, this was so crazy. And the soundtrack during the scene was crazy. Look, I'm clutching my corset right now. I'm literally like all over the place. Guys, this was pivotal. This is gonna be one of the like to most talked about scenes ever. Literally everyone went like this. <gasps> No fucking way. I was literally out of my seat. This scene was so good. And he serves the ball and Art just like, he doesn't even, he doesn't even hit it back. He's like, oh, 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 okay. Oh, okay. And then they finally get into like a rally. They finally get a rally going and they just keep fucking going. They get closer and closer and closer. They're hitting, it is back and forth and back and forth forth and the music is getting louder and and pov you're the ball for some reason in this scene and it's crazy i'm a freaking tennis ball flying through the air in the dolby cinema theater i'm, I'm freaking out i'm freaking out and then art jumps up in the air he's literally over patrick looming over him and he wins that mother freaking game he wins that game but he also hugs Patrick. They like, 
join together in like a magnificent hug. That scene made me go crazy. That scene was crazy. There's no other way to describe that scene than crazy. And it's gonna be a scene that everyone talks about for who knows how long. It's gonna be like Breaking Dawn part two. Like it's gonna be like one of those. Like no one's ever gonna forget their theater experience or this. It was something serious. It was something like cinema changing. The third part of this video is where I want to talk about like kind of like this movie as a movie, like the direction and the sound and kind of like what it brings to cinema, because I think it really does bring a lot to cinema. Obviously, the plot and the screenplay are amazing and like so like gag city, like it is so gag city. I'm like my jaw is on the floor. It is so dramatic. It is so sexy. It is so like like they ate like it's kind of just so like it's so gag city. I didn't think you were gonna go there, but you did. And I love you for that. I love you. Thank you so much for going there. It's like bring back drama. Like it is one of those movies where it's like, oh my God, that is so drama. Bring back dramatic movies played by hot people because it's like, if you're not gonna make them hot and you're not gonna make it dramatic, then I don't wanna see it. I don't need to see that. Luca surprises me so much within this movie. Like I can't express to you how much he surprises me within this movie. I am so used to former Luca Guadagnino work, which is obviously has variety. There's no way that you can look at Suspiria and Call Me By Your Name and say that they're similar movies, but I've never watched a Luca Guadagnino movie that has so much like electricity within it. I think that like, I am used to long, heavy dialogue, unspoken, in like glances, you know, high pitched guitar and, you know, almost scenes that kind of soothe you. Even in Suspiria, you have a lot of these like delicate scenes that are, that are slow, that build suspense in a very like almost calming way, even though Suspiria is like fucking crazy. I've been met with my match within this film. It is a quick, rhythmic and stressful beat throughout this movie. It is so lively through every scene. And I love the way that he can make these intimate confrontational scenes while slipping that like fast upbeat score that like electronic techno score like seeps into the scene and like you're like what the fuck is gonna happen next if this song is playing it literally brings you to life when you're watching it i don't know how else to describe it it is insane how he is able to match the rhythm and electricity of a tennis match within this movie i think that throughout the entire movie you are always met with some sort of tennis symbolism, whether that's the way he's doing his jump cuts, whether that's the way he's playing the beat, whether that's the way he's panning the camera, it is all so reminiscent of a tennis match. You're going back and forth. Your eyes cannot process what is going on. The ball is moving too fast. It is impeccable. I think he is a genius. He's literally a genius. There is nothing better than watching a tennis movie with the same beat of a tennis match. Are you kidding me? You're kidding me. That is, that is Gag City. Through this movie, we go back and forth between the symbolism of sex and the symbolism of tennis, where you have tennis matches that almost symbolize sex. We have Tashi talking about how there's a single moment in a tennis match where it feels like you're almost in love with the person. It feels like a relationship. It's not a game. It's not a ball and a racket. It's a relationship that you're having with the other person. And obviously that's a symbolism for sex. I think tennis can be a really good symbolism for sex, the moans that play out um, in the back and forth of a tennis match. There's a reason why Mike's moans sounded like that in the movie. And it's not because he sounded like that when he was hitting the ball. They definitely made him in the ADR. They said, make it more sexual. This tennis match is a symbolism for sex because it is. And I love it. I love it so much. I think that there's nothing sexier than a tennis match. The tennis matches almost always symbolize, you know, the rhythm of sex. Whereas like the rest of the movie and the editing all represent a tennis match. And even, even in terms of a love triangle, having one pillar of a person going back and forth between two people, I think, you know, also is like a tennis match. Luca chooses moments to throw the audience into the game. Like I said earlier, being that we were the tennis ball at one point, it was POV, you are the tennis ball. Like you're the ball now.
go back and forth, see how it feels. And it doesn't feel great. It feels crazy. Challengers, I think is going to revive film. And this might be a very quick opinion to make being as the movie just came out, but I truly do believe that this movie will revive it. I think that like we have been conditioned to accepting um, mediocrity. I think that's a very bold statement to make, but I feel like with award shows that I've been seeing and, you know, what big companies push out to us has just been mediocre film after mediocre film. And I think that this movie not only shows us that art can be gorgeous and well executed and meaningful and you know touching and relatable but also fun and lively and electric i think that's like such an important part of film that a lot of people leave out that you you know think that you can only get from an action movie or from a superhero movie but challenger shows us that that it's so much the possibility with film is endless i think that all of this like accompanied by like powerhouse performances like it just blows your mind away and it's magnificent as you can see i'm like very biased towards this movie i really like it i think i was always going to like it but i truly believe and you quote me on it i truly believe that this movie will change i think challengers will change a lot of how we view cinema from now on i think this is going to be one of the pillars of cinema as someone who criticizes movies and who is like the bane of anyone that makes movies existence like i am horrible i am awful i'm the worst i think that like to constantly raise the standards within cinema is amazing and I think that when you're getting these powerful actors that can do these performances, I think that like using their talent to your best is like, I think it's amazing. I, I'm so excited to see what everyone that was involved with this movie comes out later. I think they're gonna continue to make amazing art. And I think it's gonna be really, really fun to watch. And this is coming from someone who has the worst taste in movies. So I don't know why you're listening to me.